Right, what is up guys? Foster Unfiltered back again with another video. So yeah, let's get into it. Previously, as some of you will know, I've already gone into a one month review of my experience with the iPhone 10, where I went into more detail, specific detail about the pricing, the performance, the camera and the battery life. And I thought what we do with the three month review is we'll switch it up, the style of the review, and we'll just do, we'll keep it short and simple and go with the pros and cons list. Before I start the video, I just wanted to say thank you so much for supporting my previous iPhone 10 video. It's one of my best performing videos on Foster Unfiltered, my channel. So yeah, I just wanted to say thank you so much. I appreciate it more than you know. And if I can ask for one thing from you guys, if you find value in this video and find it useful in any way, then please do subscribe to my channel, Foster Unfiltered, and drop the video a like, share it with friends, get the word out. It really does help the channel grow and means far more than you could ever know. Right, so with all the boring stuff out of the way, let's actually get into the review, my three month experience and update on the iPhone 10. Now, let's start with the pros. So the iPhone 10 is still an absolute class phone with a really, really solid battery. I have no issues getting through the full day with one charge. Also at work when the Wi-Fi is bad or I'm at a coffee shop where the Wi-Fi is bad, I frequently end up using my iPhone to tether to my laptop. And even with this high usage of the battery, it still lasts through to around 5 or 6 p.m. So, you know, it's lasting around the full work day, which I have to admit is pretty damn impressive. One of the key features that really stands out to me when I think of my first three months with the iPhone 10 is the performance is still very, very solid and I rarely experience any problems. In terms of app crashes, Apple products aren't really known for crashing anywhere near as much as Android products. So that's really one of the key reasons why I actually moved from my Google Pixel 3a to an iPhone 10 was to avoid the amount of bugs going on in the software. And really, yeah, three months later, the iPhone 10 hasn't really put a foot wrong in terms of bugs and crashing. I mean, the only time the iPhone 10 does crash is when I'm on tinder of all places and lol uh i'm not sure that's actually an iphone thing i think that's more of a tinder thing maybe it's just a sign for me to get off the dating app but it is what it is now this sort of level of performance would be great for a thousand pound phone but when you consider the price that i paid for it 250 pounds roughly that's exceptional Moving on, the iPhone X's OLED screen is still an absolute delight to use and three months in, I still regularly feel really impressed by how vibrant the colours are and just how crisp and clear the graphics are. Whether I'm just navigating the iPhone's home screen or binge watching The Witcher on Netflix or watching my favourite YouTubers on YouTube. <coughs> Foster and Filtered. <clears throat> Sorry, something was in my throat. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I do not feel like I'm lagging behind with my phone in any way, such as the immense quality of the design design and just top performance of the iPhone 10. Whereas in the past with my Pixel 3a, although a solid phone with a nice design, I felt like I owned an inferior phone and didn't really look forward to using it because it felt a bit cheap. Whereas I can categorically tell you I do not feel this way with the iPhone 10 and love using it each and every day. All right, time for some cons because this phone, as much as I love it, is not perfect. Firstly, I've got to say the slow charging time and in general, just the amount of time it takes to charge the iPhone 10 is definitely the biggest hindrance, especially for someone who likes to be on the go quite a lot of the time just because you are going to be waiting for your phone to charge if you're using it so much like I do. I'm out and about a lot and it, yeah, it can be a bit of a hindrance. I generally on heavier usage days, for example, when traveling into London or watching Netflix, YouTube, uh, I do tend to bring a battery pack as I know it will be close to, if not dead by the end of the day. So that would be my tip. Uh, it can be a bit of a hindrance. So yeah, definitely bring a battery pack if you're expecting a long day out. Now, for those of you who saw my one month review of the iPhone 10, you would have noticed that now I have a case on the phone. And I did this for the obvious reason I wanted to protect my phone. But I also did this because of aesthetic reasons. I'm no longer obsessed with the beautiful white design of the phone and less impressed with it. And that's not a slight on the phone. It's just a natural thing when you, you know, you have a new toy and it gets older. You just naturally marvel at it slightly less in terms of design. And I must admit, the fingerprint smudges on the back of the phone were a little bit annoying. In terms of the battery health, it is now 85%, which is what I expected. I have been using it for a couple more months. When I got it, it was 88%. And all I would say is that due to the steady decline in battery health, I will probably upgrade phones in one year to 18 months time. Also, it is important to note that each time a new iOS comes out, for example, iOS 15 this fall, the battery life does take a small hit. 
Now, in my previous video, many of you were asking me about alternatives to the iPhone 10, and really the same question kept coming up. Should I get the iPhone 10 or the iPhone 10 XS? And to be honest with you, the answer to this depends on your budget and whether you want the incremental improvements that the 10S has to offer. So if you have the extra 50 pounds lying around and it's not a big hindrance for you to pay that extra 50 pounds, then go ahead and get the 10S. But if they're starting to quote you more than 50 pounds, you know, over 100 pounds for the 10S, then I would definitely recommend to stick with the 10 because the only real improvement of significance that you get from the 10S is the camera. So overall, now although the charging is painfully slow, in terms of value for money and what I get in return for what I paid at £250, this phone is an absolute bargain. Probably the best deal I've ever received for a phone, especially considering with the 10, I don't feel like I'm behind in any way. I still feel like I'm holding a top of the range, extremely well made and high quality phone. Look, at the end of the day, the fact that I still feel like in 2021 that I'm using a high end top of the range phone that was actually originally released in 2017 and it's a phone that I look extremely forward to using every day, tells you exactly how I feel about this phone. And honestly, I would recommend it to anyone who is looking for a high-end, high-performing, quality phone, and they want to get it on the cheap. I really couldn't recommend it highly enough. But anyway, guys, that pretty much covers the video. So if you have any questions regarding the iPhone 10 or an alternative such as the 10s, then feel free to drop me a question in the comments down below. Also, one other thing, some of the more eagle eyed observers out there will have noticed that I look a little bit sweaty. This is not a skin condition or some sort of defect of myself. It is basically for some reason in the UK, we are experiencing something called a heat wave and we're not used to it. I don't have aircon in this house, so yeah, I have the fan on full blast over there. And it's fucking hot right now in the UK, and we're not used to it. So just uh, putting it out there.